Okay, so the lesson is now recording. Okay, before we begin, can you hear me clearly, students? Okay, Carrie, welcome. Okay, thank you, Wanja, for responding. Okay, so this is our lesson on 3.2, resistance. So as I mentioned, you may prepare with your slide with you and your calculator as well because there are a few exercises involving calculation we are going to solve for in this lesson. Okay, student 3.2 resistance. This is our second content standard in chapter 3. Okay, good morning, parents. We are just about to start. Okay, so 3.2 resistance, as I mentioned, is our second content standard. Okay, for five by Duri who have missed our class on 3.1, current and potential difference, since some of you went for your Ujian Lisan Bahasa China last time, right? Okay, you don't have to worry because I have saved the recorded video I conducted with five arcade and five citrine. So later I will share to you the link so you can follow the lesson uh, by watching that videos. Okay, so I hope that will help you in following 3.1 current and potential difference. Okay, so this is resistance uh, 3.2. Okay, so uh, in 3.1 we have discussed current and potential difference. So by now you have to have the knowledge on what is meant by current, what is meant by potential difference, and how to draw an electric field pattern where the charges, uh, the symbol, uh, the direction is outwards from the positive charges and inwards to the negative charges. And also in our first lesson, we have discussed what will be the effect on an object which is placed in an electric field. I discussed with you two examples last time. Uh, the first one is the ping pong ball we place in between an um, electric field. So you can see when the switch is on, the ping pong ball will be oscillating between the two plates, negative and positive plates. And for the second situation we have discussed the candle flame placed in an electric field you can see uh, the flame will be dispersed into opposite direction okay more portion attracted to the left uh, to the negative plates uh, due to the big mass of the positive ion okay so this uh, in this topic resistance altogether there are six learning standard which you have to master very well so for today's lesson i will cover the first two learning standard okay where the first one is to compare and contrast ohmic and non-ohmic conductor so what is ohmic conductor what is ohmic uh, non-ohmic conductor we will see later and then second, we will go through the second learning standard 3.2.2 to solve problems involving combination of series and parallel circuit. Okay, welcome, Peying. So for this second learning standard, if you remember, actually you have learned in Form 2. Okay, do you remember you learned series and parallel circuit in Form 2? In science, you have learned them. Remember, Wanjia, remember, Ong Jung? Junwei, remember? Okay, who teach you last time? Series and parallel circuit. Uh, do you remember the name of the science teacher? Uh, maybe some of you learn with Puan Tang. Ada yang belajar dengan Puan Wong. Uh, ada yang belajar dengan Puan Salima. Okay, Puan Kartina and so on. Okay, so this is as a repetition for a series and parallel circuit but for for this year in physics form 5 we will use more in combination of these two circuit okay so without further ado let us begin with our first learning standard is to compare and contrast ohmic and non-ohmic conductor okay student what is a conductor students what is a conductor uh, what is a conductor anyone have any idea what is a conductor? To conduct electricity, very good. A material which can conduct electricity. Example of conductor? You can open your mic or you can type your opinion or suggestion in the info messages. Example of conductor, anyone? It can be 
Uh, it can be uh, most of the metal material or a uh, conductor. Okay, example, copper, iron, okay, and so on. Okay, so first before we look what is ohmic and what is non-ohmic conductor, there is one law here you need to understand and know very well. And the name to the law related to electricity is called Ohm's law. So if you refer to your module on the very first page, on the boxes, on the top left corner, you write the definition for Ohm's law as seen in this screen now, okay? So what is Ohm's law? Can someone read what is Ohm's law? What's stated in Ohm's law? Okay, welcome, Chin Xiang. Can you read what is Ohm's law, Chin Xiang, from my screen? Or any volunteer? What does stated in Ohm's law? So in Ohm's law, it says that the electric current, the symbol is I, flowing through a conductor. Oh, don't have my, okay, it's okay is directly proportional to the potential difference V across it if the temperature and any other physical condition are keep constant. Okay, so Ohm's law say electric current flow to a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference supply. Okay, if provided that a temperature and any other physical condition are kept constant, it means that when potential different increases, so the current flow through the conductor will also increase. Okay, students, so you can write this Ohm's law uh, in the first page on your module. Okay, so this is the equation for Ohm's law, V equal IR. V is the potential difference, I is the current, and R is the resistance. So it relates current, potential difference, and resistance. Okay? And this triangle uh, will help you to know the relationship from all these three parameters. Also, if you want to write V, okay, V equal to I multiply R. Okay? If you are looking for the current, I, it can be determined from V divided R, okay? And if you uh, find the resistance, so the resistance is given by voltage or potential difference divide current, V divide R, okay? So this triangle you can add on in your module, okay? So very simple formula, V equal IR represent a formula for Ohm's law. So are you done writing Ohm's law in the box. If you are done, you can type done so we can proceed with our next slide. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Wanjia. Okay. Done, Roger. Very good. Okay, students. So this is one simple. Before we go to a simple experiment uh, to study Ohm's law, okay, this is a few electrical component and their symbol which you will find commonly in this chapter. Okay, the first one is emitter. Okay, what is the function of emitter, students? Okay, emitter is used to measure what? Emitter. Okay, the symbol is A, capital A. And second, we have voltmeter, yes, to measure current on jump. Very good. And voltmeter is a device we can use to measure potential different or voltage. And this is the symbol for connecting wire. This is a symbol for resistance, fixed resistance. Okay. And this is the symbol for dry cell or batteries, switches. This is in an open position. Open position means the switch is on or off. When the switch is open, it means the switch is on or off, students. Off, very good. Okay, so you can see it is open. So it is no connected, not connected. So the circuit is uh, incomplete. So we say the switch is now is in an off position. When we close the switch, mean it is on. Okay, circuit complete current flow in the circuit. Okay, this is example, uh, symbol for wire, constant wire or any kind of wire we draw in this way. The symbol for bar, cross there, and this is rheostat. Okay, rheostat is an adjustable resistor. Okay, adjustable. Ini resistor ya, bukan resistance, resistor. Okay, ini fixed resistor. It has a fixed value. Rheostat is an adjustable resistor. Okay, mean we can manipulate the value, can change the value. And this is how example we fix 
a dry cell, a voltmeter, and a conductor. X in any, any conductor or any electrical devices. It can be kettle, it can be iron, hair dryer, bulb, and so on. Okay. So for voltmeter, how do we connect voltmeter to a conductor? If you see in this diagram, we connect voltmeter in parallel arrangement. The voltmeter must be connected in parallel arrangement with our conductor. Meanwhile, for emitter, it must be connected in series with the conducted material, okay? Okay, next. Okay, this is the first experiment on your module page one to uh, study what is the relationship between current and potential different. Okay, you are given with this situation, student figure A and figure B. It shows two electrical circuit. Okay, the question is why do the emitters show different reading? Can you spot three differences in this figure? Okay. okay. Can you spot three differences in this figure? What is the first difference you can see in between figure A and figure B? Okay. Any difference? Number of battery. Very good. Number of battery, light of the bulb. Light of the bulb means the brightness. Is it, Angjong? The brightness. Okay. The first one is number of battery. On figure A, we use single battery. In figure B, we use two batteries. Okay, second, uh, the reading of emitter. Very good, Cheryl. Reading of emitter, you can see. Uh, which emitter shows higher reading, students? I zoom the diagram for you. Okay, which emitter shows higher reading? Emitter A or emitter in figure B? Okay, right side, the second, yeah. Figure B shows higher reading on emitter above 2 ampere. This one in between 1 and 2 ampere. Okay, the third difference you can see on the brightness of the bulb. Okay, you can see the brightness of the bulb. The bulb in figure B light up brighter. Okay, the bulb in figure A light up dimmer. Okay, so there are the three differences. Number of tricell, uh, deflection of emitter, pointer or reading of emitter, and the brightness of the bulb. Okay, so what inference we can write for this experiment? You can say the current flow in the circuit will influence the brightness of the bulb or the current affect the brightness of the bulb. Okay, and for our hypothesis here, we are investigating what is the relationship between potential different and current flow. So our hypothesis is the higher the potential difference, the higher the current. Okay, the higher the potential difference, the higher the current. Potential difference is provided by the batteries or the power supply. Okay, are you done with the inference and hypothesis? Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, let us now see what is the aim for this experiment. So we are studying what is the relationship between current and potential difference. So our MB for this experiment is current Okay, electric current and our responding variable is potential different. Our fixed variable is the length of conductor or you can write type of uh, wire use or type of material use and also diameter of wire or it can be temperature. Okay, for the fixed variable, you can write any one of the a variable listed here okay it does not necessary to write all uh, right one is enough for the fixed variable no problem and these are all the apparatus and material provided for this experiment we need a dry cell as to supply the voltage and a dry cell holder a switch connecting wire emitter voltmeter meter rule a real state constant wire. So constant wire is the conductor we are using here. Constant wire is the type of conductor. We have a nichrome wire, we have tungsten wire, we have copper wire, silver wire, aluminium wire, and another type of wire. Okay, so in this experiment, we are using constant wire with standard wire gauge SWG24. Okay, what is the meaning of SWG? This determine the cross section or the diameter of the wire used. 
Okay, we have uh, SWG 24, 22, 28, 32 students. And the bigger the number shows here, okay, what do you think happened to the diameter? The bigger the number, the bigger the diameter or the smaller the diameter? SWG is standard wire gauge, G-A-U-G-E. Okay, what do you think? Here we are using SWG24. When you are using greater number, SWG32, for example, uh, the cross-sectional area of the wire will be smaller. A okay, bigger SWG shows smaller diameter. Okay, smaller SWG shows bigger diameter or big cross-section area of the wire. Okay, so it is inverted. And we are using about 20 centimeter length of wire in this experiment. So this is uh, all the component, the cell, the real estate, the constant wire, the voltmeter switch and emitter. And when you are asked to draw a circuit diagram, this is how we represent our circuit diagram. Okay, in our OGN pengesanan before this, uh, there's one question asked you to draw circuit diagram, right? Can you draw them? Can you draw the circuit diagram? I asked you in Ujian Pengesanan uh, recently. I hope you can draw them. So when you are drawing your circuit diagram, make sure you draw the correct symbol, correct connection, follow by correct labeling. Uh, so no labeling means no mark for labeling. You get mark for the drawing only if you draw them in correct order. Okay. So this is how we conducted the experiment. Okay, so we are doing this experiment for ohmic and non-ohmic conductor. Okay, so what is ohmic conductor? A constant wire is example of an ohmic conductor. Okay, so this is the procedure from number one, number two, number three, and number four. So we close the switch, adjust the real state until we get an emitter reading 0 0.2 shows on the emitter. Okay, so you adjust the real state to control uh, the amount of current flow in the circuit. That's why current is our manipulated variable here. We can, we can select Okay, the magnitude of current by adjusting the real state by uh, pushing the slider to the left or to the right. Okay, then we record the voltmeter reading shows and find the ratio through calculation, ratio of V to I uh, by calculation and repeat this experiment by adjusting the real state so to give you a new value of current show in the emitter 0.3, 0.4, 0.5 and 0.6. Remember, whenever you are conducting an experiment, uh, we must take at least five different readings. Okay, so this is the example of reading you may see on the voltmeter. Okay, and this is how to find the ratio. So ratio means V divided I. 0 0.16 divided by I give you 1.6. 0 0.62 divided by the current 0 0.5 will give you 1.24. So from this reading, you can see when the current increases, the voltmeter reading also increases. So we get uh, the idea that potential difference uh, increases when current increases. Okay, so are you done with the reading for ohmic conductor? You can copy this reading in the table provided in your module on page one, the result. Okay. All right, student. Okay, and we repeat this experiment by using another type of conductor, which is called a non-ohmic conductor. Example is a filament bulb. So we replace the constant wire and we put the bulb in. Okay, so we close the switch. So this constant wire we take off, we replace with filament bulb. Close the switch again, adjust the real state. So the same procedure as before. Adjust the current until it reaches 0 0.14. Then record the voltmeter reading and we repeat the experiment again by adjusting the real state until you get this value on your emitter reading 0 0.16, 0 0.18, 0 0.20, and 0 0.22 ampere. So we record all our reading in this table. Okay, and find the ratio of V to I by using calculator. Okay, so you can check either the value is correct or not. Again, here you can see when current increases, uh, the voltmeter increases. 
and the ratio here is somehow increases. If you compare the ratio between omic and non-omic, the ratio for omic conductor is quite consistent. Okay, for this one, the ratio is increasing all the time. Okay, so later we can differentiate what will be the pattern of the graph shown by omic and non-omic conductor from these two table of result. Okay, so uh, later you can plot the graph. It is ready on your module page three and page uh, page four and page five. Okay, so you can do this later because it took uh, quite a lot of time to complete this graph. Okay, I show you the pattern first. So you just give your focus. So this is how we plot our graph for ohmic conductor and for non-ohmic conductor based on the table of results. Okay, we recorded earlier. So make sure you you use a uniform scale on both axes. Okay, this is our, um, on y-axis, this is our responding variable. V is the potential difference. And at the back here is the unit volt. Okay, and this is our MV current. The unit is ampere. Okay, for the graph on the right side, uh, this one supposed to be volt, potential different, not resistance. So it is V and the unit is volt. Okay. Uh, this one, the unit and volt is same symbol. Okay. The first V is for the quantity, potential different of voltage. And for the second is the symbol for volt V. And here again, our MV current uh, and the symbol is ampere, the unit. Okay. So when you plot a graph for non-ohmic conductor, this is the pattern of the graph, a curved line. Okay, for this one, a straight line from the origin. Okay, students, so from here, what can you say about the relationship between V and I for ohmic conductor? And what is the relationship for V and I for non-ohmic conductor? Okay, anyone? Can you write the conclusion for this experiment? It is on the second page. Okay, on the second page. Okay, on the second page. Okay, how to write the conclusion? Directly proportional ohmic. Yes, very good, Koja. How about the non-ohmic conductor? What relation you can say there? So for ohmic conductor, you can write this for experiment A involving the ohmic conductor constant and wire. Potential difference is directly proportional to the current. Okay, yes. For experiment B, we say... Uh, the current increases, so the potential difference increases. Okay, the larger the current, the larger the potential difference. Or you can say, yes, when the current increases, so the potential difference increases. All right? Okay. So I hope you are clear with the pattern for ohmic and non-ohmic conductor. Example of ohmic is constant wire. Example of non-ohmic conductor is filament bulb. Okay, now this is precaution you can write for this experiment. Okay, the precaution is found after the procedure in page one in your module. Okay, you can go back to page one and you can write any one of these precaution. Not necessary to write all three. So you can choose uh, which one uh, is uh, some students uh, prefer to write the shorter one, but some students uh, prefer to write uh, the precaution that they can remember the most. So you have choices. Either you write, make sure the connecting wire are connected tightly. Or you can say, avoid parallax error when taking the reading of the emitter and voltmeter by uh, seeing the pointer and the image uh, are overlap. Mean when you take the reading, your eyes must be exactly on top of the pointer, not reading from uh, the left side or read from the right side. Okay, so this is to avoid parallax error. And third, you can write, turn off the switch if not taking any reading so this is to ensure the temperature is not increases so we can maintain okay we can maintain the temperature along conducting this experiment okay so are you done with the precaution uh if you are hard working you can write all three uh, but if you think not necessary uh, enough to write uh, any one of these precaution okay students okay now let us go to the discussion okay discussion 
Okay, discussion. The first question, what is the function of real state in this circuit, student? Can you respond? Actually, I repeat for a few times before, what is the function of real state in this experiment? The real state is to, is to, uh, is to adjust or to control the flow of current in the circuit. Not control the resistance, control the current on jump. Okay, real state is a resistor. Okay, real state is a resistor. Okay, uh, adjustable resistor. So it functions to control the flow of current in the circuit. Yes. So we can uh, increase the current or we can decrease the current flow by adjusting the real state. Okay, so our second question, student, calculate the gradient of the graph for, no, uh, for the ohmic conductor. Okay, so you can refer to my graph and you can try to find the gradient of the graph. You know how to find a gradient from graph, right? It is y divided x. So you can take uh, any two points along the line. So in my example here, I took the fifth point for my reading and the origin 0, 0. So uh, my first point 0, 0, my second point 0 0.5, 0 0.062 here in this point. So I find the gradient and this is the value 0 0.1 to 4 volt per ampere. And this is the unit volt per ampere. Okay, so can you tell me what is this value of gradient represent students? The gradient of VI graph for ohmic conductor represent what? This value represent what? 0 0.124 voltage per ampere. Yes, it represent the resistance in the conductor. Very good. Gradient represent uh, resistance. Okay, so the gradient is V divide i which mean gradient r r equal v divide r from the ohm's law you write before okay and this is to conclude okay uh, or to compare ohmic and non-ohmic conductor in your module it is stated as number six okay you have the table for ohmic and non-ohmic conductor in page two in your module so first uh, what is ohmic conductor student ohmic conductor is any conductor which obeys Ohm's law. Okay, means we can apply the formula of V equal to IR, okay, to find V or to find R or to find current in the circuit. Okay, so ohmic conductor is any conductor which obeys Ohm's law, which means the current is directly proportional to the potential difference. Okay, so you write this, ohmic conductor. Okay, number four, what is an ohmic conductor? So you write, conductor which obeys Ohm's law. While number five, what is a non-ohmic conductor? So this is non-ohmic conductor. Conductor which does not obey Ohm's law, which means we cannot apply V equal to IR here. It does not obey because it doesn't show V directly proportional to I. Okay. And second, number six, uh, this is how we sketch. Okay, so you can sketch a graph for ohmic conductor, straight line graph from the origin. And this is the sketching for non-ohmic conductor, a curve with positive gradient. Okay. Okay, then what to do next? Okay, the shape of the graph. Okay, the shape of the graph you can write for ohmic conductor, straight line through origin. It is a straight line graph through the origin. Meanwhile, for the non-ohmic conductor, the shape is curve curve shape with positive gradient uh, you can add in here curve shape with positive gradient okay and this one the relationship between v and i is given here so what is the relationship of v and i here v is directly proportional to i okay potential different directly proportional to current for uh, ohmic conductor meanwhile for non-ohmic conductor, what is the relationship between V and I? So you can say when current increases, potential difference increases. Okay, I increases, V increases. Okay. And for the gradient, if you look at the gradient, what can you say about the gradient? Is the gradient constant? 
constant value or different along this line? What can you say about the gradient? Uh, yes, for straight line, the gradient is constant or fixed. So you can write fixed or constant. Okay. Meanwhile, for the non-omic, what can you say about the gradient? Uh, about the gradient along the line. So you can see that the curve becomes steeper, right? Becomes steeper from the beginning until the end. So we can say the gradient increases. Yes, gradient increases. So this tells for ohmic conductor, the resistance is fixed. Okay, when the gradient is uh, fixed, mean the resistance is fixed. Gradient constant, resistance is constant. Okay, and for this one, gradient increases. So it means the resistance in the bulb or the resistance in the conductor increases. Okay, gradient increases with positive uh, concavity. All right. Okay, you just write gradient increases. All right. Okay, so any questions so far? Anything you would like to ask? Are you clear with the lesson until this point? Compare ohmic and non ohmic conductor students. Okay, so now let us go to the, before we go to the conclusion, okay, we take a look first for non-ohmic conductor, why the gradient increases, students. So this is the reason. Actually, you can observe your filament bulb at home. The longer you operate the bulb, you can feel the bulb will become hotter, right? Uh, the more longer it operates, the hotter it becomes. Mean when bulb operate, they will generate heat in the inside. So when they generate heat inside, definitely the temperature will be increases. Okay, and with the increasing of this temperature, that's why it increased resistance in the bulb. Okay, but for ohmic conductor, when we are using ohmic conductor, we try very well to keep the temperature consistent. So that's why the resistance is keep consistent all way long uh, how temperature affect resistance to uh on jump okay when tem uh, this one is on the third on the third learning standard okay what factor affect resistance so we will discuss more detail uh, on that when we are discussing our third learning standard okay so we have a few factor affect uh, resistance in the conductor okay Okay, students, so we have come to the conclusion for the first experiment. Student, define resistance. Uh, so if you want to understand resistance, you can uh, look at the simple simulation here. V is potential difference, A is current, and this is the symbol for resistance. So what is resistance, student? Can you write something from this short simulation shows here? Any idea how to write resistance? Anyone? Okay, so V in E is the potential difference supply across two points along this conductor and current, uh, this is the current flow across the conductor. So this is resistance. So we can write resistance as, yes, in ratio on junk, it will be, uh, in words, it will be ratio. A ratio of potential difference across the conductor to the current flowing in the conductor okay so i repeat resistance is the ratio of potential different v across the conductor to the current flowing in the conductor so if you write the formula for resistance so this is our, our ratio of v to i v is the potential different i is the current and the si unit is voltage per ampere voltage is from potential different, ampere is from current, or we generally call it as ohm, OHM, and this is the symbol for ohm, omega. It used the omega sign, ohm. Okay, so what does one ohm mean, students? Okay, what does one ohm mean? One ohm means a resistor give the resistance of one ohm when. Uh, current of one ampere flows across the conductor with a potential difference of one volt apply across the conductor. Okay, so this is what one ohm means. Okay, and this is how we write equation for ohm's law. V equal pi r. Okay, so I hope you can remember this formula very short. It relates voltage, current, 
and resistance. Okay, when I mention voltage, voltage is another name we give for potential difference. So voltage, potential difference is the same thing. The unit is volt. Okay, I is current. Unit is ampere. R, resistance. Unit is ohm. Okay, so by this, we are done with our first learning standard. Okay, who never see a resistor? If you remember, this is how a fixed resistor look like. Uh, ini fixed resistor. You ada belajar tak dulu? Fixed resistor in lower form. In RBT, uh, maybe you use, uh, you make some electronic component using resistor, right? Okay, so this is the symbol for resistor. It has gold. Okay, all this color represents certain values. So we can know the values for this resistor by looking at the color represent in each. Okay, but I forgot already what does the value represent for each color. Uh, later we can make a further study on them. So we know when we look at the color, we know this is 10 ohm, uh, this is 2 ohm, this is 1 ohm, this is 5 ohm. Any fixed resistor. Okay, we have another one called adjustable resistor, uh, real state. Okay. All right, so done with the first one. So what do you think about the first learning standard? Can you follow to compare ohmic and non-ohmic conductor? Okay, so now we go to the second part. Okay, to the second part, uh, learning standard two, to solve problem involving combination of series and parallel circuit. Okay, this one, uh, please get ready with your calculator because we have a lot to do. Okay, uh, a lot of question, a lot of example to see. Okay, student, okay, first and foremost, as I mentioned, you learned this before in form two, series and parallel circuit. Okay, this one you can find in your textbook. This is how a series circuit looks like. Okay, it consists of a few electrical or electronic components all connected in one single part. A series they are all connected in one single path the emitter okay it's r1 in our conductor r1 r2 and r3 all connected in one path so we call it a series connection meanwhile for parallel parallel you can see they are branches or junction okay we have first conductor second conductor the third conductor connected in branches okay this is the first branch showing uh, where the first conductor at second branch the second conductor and the third branch where the third conductor okay series one path parallel has branches at least two branches okay maximum no limit minimum two branches for parallel okay so how to find i v and r uh, in ohm's law formula for series and parallel connection okay for series how to determine the current flow in the circuit it is given by i equal i1 equal i2 equal r3 it means that the current flow in series circuit are all the same at any point along the conductor okay i give the example if uh emitter here read five ampere so five ampere of current flow to the first conductor five ampere of current also flow through the second conductor and five ampere of current flows to the third conductor meanwhile for parallel how to determine the current flow in the circuit i in e is the current flow in the main circuit okay so once it enter the branches the current will be divided into uh, three branches as shown here if two branches then divided into two branches if 10 branches then will be divided into 10 branches then they will meet at the end of the branches and combine back become the main current okay for example let's say uh, the first conductor second conductor third conductor are all identical they have resistance of one ohm okay so one ampere of current flowing here okay let's say we have uh, one ampere of current flowing here so one ampere will be divided equally into these three branches if all the resistance are the same so uh, 33 percent of current flow to the first branch 33 percent of current flow to the second branch 33 percent of current flow to the third branch and when they meet back here combine become one ampere again okay and second how to find potential different for series students the potential different this is the potential difference supplied by the dry cell v equal to v1 
plus V2 plus V3. Okay, equal to the potential difference for each conductor in the circuit. Okay, meanwhile, for parallel, the potential difference in each branches are all the same. Okay, this one V, potential difference supplied by the dry cell equal to the potential difference of the first conductor equal to the potential difference of the second conductor and equal to the potential difference of the third conductor uh, it is enough all the same if this one is six volt here is six volt six volt six volt okay for this one if this one is six volt if r1 r2 and rp all the same means here is two volt for each two plus two plus two finally give you X volt the total okay and the third one how to find effective resistance mean the total resistance in the circuit for series is the sum of all resistance of the conductor okay resistance for conductor one plus resistance for conductor two plus resistance for conductor to give you the effective resistance or the total resistance in this circuit Okay, meanwhile for parallel this is the formula on how to find the effective resistance 1 over R. Okay, so 1 over R is 1 over R1 reciprocal of R1 plus reciprocal of R2 plus the reciprocal of R3. Okay, so this is the formula involving I, V, and R for both series and parallel. Okay, let us do some exercises how to apply this formula. Okay, before that, let us take a look at two examples in your textbook on page 104 and 105. So you can open your textbook as well. Okay, we have a diagram shows here. Can you tell me what type of circuit is this? Is it series or parallel or combination of series and parallel? Okay. How? Okay, what kind of series is this, students? Okay, go just say parallel. How about the rest? Actually, this one is a combination, combination of parallel and series. Okay, how we understand this circuit? R2 and R3 are arranged in parallel, correct? And they are in series with R1. Okay, I repeat, R2 and R3 are connected in parallel and they are in series with R1. So we say this is a combination circuit. Yes, Cheryl. So you are given the value for the resistance for each R1, the resistance is 2 ohm, R2 is 4 ohm, R3 is 12 ohm uh, respectively. Okay, so the first question, find the effective resistance in the circuit. Second, find the current flow through the 2 ohm resistor, mean R1. Okay, and find the potential difference across uh, resistor R1. And question C. Find current flow to the R2 resistor, which is 4 ohm, and R3 resistor, which is 12 ohm. And also find the potential difference across each of them. So first, we want to find the effective resistance, and then find current and potential difference in each of these resistors. Okay, so how to do this? In order to do this, first, you can simplify the circuit. Okay, so how to simplify the circuit? So R2 and R3, we can combine, become a single uh, resistor, which is R4, uh, as shown here. Okay, and now R4 is in series with R1. Okay, so how to find the resistance for parallel circuit R2 and R3? This is how we can from the calculation. Okay, Ong Jeng say how we derive the formula for a parallel actually they uh, they drive this formula from the experiment conducted earlier from the physicists and okay, when they got the number and then they figure out the formula to uh, to drive to that answer okay this is how the ancient scientists or physicists come up with any formula most are from the experiment conducted and from that they derive uh, the formula we now uh, we use the formula to conduct experiment uh, the other way around okay because we are not an inventors we are just use uh, whatever have been invented so maybe you can become a new inventor in the future okay you do some experiments some study and come out with a new formula who knows okay <laughs> who knows Ong Chung, you can be one of them all right students so how to find total resistance in parallel hope so yeah 
it's a it's a wonderful uh, ambitions or dream okay so how to find uh, the resistance here in r4 okay so 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 so will give you 4 over 12 so to find r4 we have to invert okay we have to invert so r4 will be 3 ohm which means uh, 4 ohm plus this one 12 ohm will give you effective resistance of 3 ohm in parallel circuit okay and then we plus with the r1 2 ohm so the effective resistance in this circuit is 5 ohm okay and second how to find the current so we can use the ohm's law formula okay this is the current flow in the circuit V is the voltage supply by the cell, which is 6. And R is the effective resistance flow in the circuit. So the main current flow in this circuit shown in A1 is 1.2 ampere. Okay. So how much current flow in R1, student? How much current flow in R1? R1 ini in series. So here is 1.2 ampere. Okay. So we can find the potential difference. V equal IR. Current flow in R1 is 1.2 ampere and it has a resistor of 2 ohm. So give voltage of 2.4 volt. Okay. Meanwhile, for C, find the current flow in the 4 ohm resistor R2 and 12 ohm resistor R3. So we use the same formula. Okay. First, this is the potential difference uh, in this circuit. So here is 2.4. Total is 6. So for this junction, it is 3.6 volt. Okay. So since they are parallel, being here is 3.6 volt. This one also 3.6 volt. Okay. So how to find the current flow in R2? Again, Ohm's law formula. So 0 0.9 ampere. And for R3, 0 0.3 ampere. So when you total back 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3, it will give you 1.2, uh, the current flow in main. So here 1.2 flows and then 1.2 will be divided into these two branches. So 0 0.9 flows through R2 and 0 0.3 flows through R3. So when they meet back at the end of the branches, they combine back become 1.2 ampere. Okay, so I hope you are clear with this example. And this is example two. Okay, another combination circuit. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, the first two are in series. And then on the top branch, two and two ohm here is in series. And then parallel with this four ohm. And this is parallel to the uh, series with these two resistor. Okay, this is how we understand how we read a circuit. Find effective resistance, find the current, and find the potential difference across each one. So you can see this example later on in your textbook. Okay, students. Okay, so for in our module, okay, let us try to do a few exercises today. Okay, I hope you are ready and good to go. Okay, first diagram, very easy. Can you tell me what kind of circuit we have here? We have three resistor with 20 ohm resistance for the first one, 10 ohm resistance for the second, 5 ohm resistance for the third. Okay, very good. This is series. So how to find the effective resistance for series? Very easy. You just sum all. Okay, so the effective resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3. R1 is 20, R2 is 10, R3 is 5. So it will give you a total of 35 ohm. Don't forget the symbol, 35 ohm, the unit. Okay. Second, what kind of series is, oh, so what kind of series, what kind of circuit we have here in B? Uh, we have 2 ohm, 5 ohm, and 10 ohm resistor uh, across point X and point Y. So this is, yes, this is parallel connection. So remember what is the formula to find effective resistance in parallel? It is given by this. Okay, yes. So 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10. And then don't forget to invert. Okay, because we want to find 4R. So you have to invert 10 over 10. Yes, so it will give you 1.25 the effective resistance in this parallel circuit okay so a and b any problem students can you find effective resistance for a and b 
we have 31 person here now. Ching Siang, I hope you have, don't have any problem. Yeah, Jun Yu, Zerlin, okay, Zerlin, Yuan Han. Make sure you do together. Then only you can understand how to find, how to solve a combination series. Okay, now C and D, we have combination C. We have four resistor of 10, 20, 8, and 8 here in C. Okay, how to find effective resistor? I give you 30 seconds to solve this for C. Okay, so once you're done, you can share your answer in the info messages. Okay. And also for D and E. Okay, I give you two minutes. Lah. Okay, two minutes to find C, D, and E. Okay, so take your time and try to find for all. C combination, D also combination, we have 5, 8, 8, here the second branch we have 8 and on the third branch we have 4 uh, resistor connected in series. Okay, and for E, we have 3 resistor, 1 ohm and then 4 and 2 in, in parallel and later they are series with uh, the 1 ohm resistor. Okay, 34 ohm, which one is 34? C, Oja? Okay. The rest of you, please find. Okay, go just say C is 34 ohm. Okay, how about D and E? Okay, please give a try to all these questions today. Okay, I give you another two minutes. I will show the answer on 10.55. Okay. Okay, are you done? Okay, if you have any problem in finding them, okay, don't feel hesitate to ask. Okay, so don't feel shy. When you are learning, you shouldn't feel shy. Okay. okay so I think we can check the answer for C first. Okay, so for C, it is a combination. So first we solve the parallel. So when you have combination, uh, the tips is you solve the parallel connection first. So how to find the effective resistance in this parallel circuit. So 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 will give you 2 over 8. So don't forget to invert. So it will give you 4. So the resistance here is 4. Then 4 plus 10 plus 20 to find the total. Okay, 4 plus 10. It's so very good, 34. The answer is 34 for C. Okay, then... We check for D, uh, maybe 3.2 for D. One year also get 3.2 for D. Okay, we check first. So first you solve this. Okay, this one you add first. 8 plus 8 give you 16. Okay, so on the top branches we have 16. And then on the middle we have 8. And on the lower branches we have 4 plus 4 which is 8. So now 16 is parallel with 8 and parallel with 8 down here. So we use this formula. 1 over 16 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So it will give you, yes, very good, 3.2 ohm for D. Okay, D is 3.2 ohm. Okay, and for E, how to find E? E, okay, so for this one, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2. So give you 3 over 4. Don't forget to invert. So it will give you the R. 1.33. Then 1.33 plus 1. So it will give you 2.33 ohm, the effective resistance. Okay, very good. Wanja can get, Oja also can get. So I hope the rest also can find the solution for C, D, and E. Okay, very good. Okay, we try it next. Okay, this one is on page. Okay, you can across the graph there. So this is on page 6. Okay, question F. G, H, I, and J. Okay, so then I give you okay five minutes maybe for this. Okay, three to five minutes. Five ohm for G. Okay, Gojo is done and 2.33 for E. Okay, E is already discussed. The rest also you can share your answer here. Okay, Yuan Han, Zhe Yun, we have Hui Xin there, Sri Hong Zhe, Wei Jing, Yi Bon is still there also. Ke Yi, okay, Yu Qing, Pei Yin. Okay, Wan Jia, F20 ohm. Okay. Ki Gi Xian, how about you, F? Yeah, F is a series. Okay, we have two point X and Y, two, five, three, and ten in all connected in one way. 
in series connection. Okay, so number four, uh, F is quite easy. So it is 20 ohm. 2 plus 5 plus 3 plus 10 give you 20. Okay, how about G? Okay, G, we have combination. On the top branch, we have 4 ohm. And then below, we have 3 and 9, which is series. So you have to settle this first. 3 plus 9 become 12. Then later, 4 and 12 are parallel. So you find the effective resistance for this parallel. And then plus with 2 ohm in series. Okay, so this will give you a 5 ohm for G. Okay, anybody got 5 ohm for G? Okay, G. Anyone answer G? Okay. And then for H. Yeah, for H is 25 ohm. Very good. Okay, we have, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 resistor there. So you solve these branches first. Okay, 20 ohm is parallel with this 10 and 10. So 10 and 10, you plus first become 20. So 20 and 20 are parallel. And then in series with this 10 and 5 at the end. Okay, so it will give you 25. So 10 plus 10 plus 5 is 25. And for I, how to find for I, we have 3, 5 and 5 is in series. So you add them, become 10. So 10 and 5 is parallel. So this will give you an effective resistance of 3.33 ohm. Okay, very good. Okay, and the last one for J. Okay, how to read J? We have two point there, X and Y. Okay, the top branches. Top branches, we have 5 and 5 is in series. Okay, 5 and 5. So you add them, become 10. Okay, and at the lower branch, we have 5 and 15 in series. So you can add them. So here we have 20. So 10 and 20 is in parallel. And then they are in series with the 8 ohm resistor. Okay, so how to find the total? So this is how we do. Okay, in me, 1 over 10, the top branches. 1 over 20, the top branches. So this is the reciprocal, the inverted. So we plus 8. So it will give you, yes, very good, 14.67 ohms. Okay. Uh, J, uh, go to J is 14.67. 14.67. All right. Okay, how can you get 9.26 to 5? Check that. Okay, you can check that in your answer. Okay, very good. Those who are uh, answering correctly. So the rest, uh, if you don't know how to find, okay, you try again just to understand, try to understand the circuit and solve the parallel first, that's the tip. Then only you add with the series. Um, uh, series connection. Okay. Okay, now can we proceed with the second question? Student, take them question. Okay, now this is the diagram. We have three resistor. Yeah, or you see wrong. Okay, so uh, don't do a careless mistake. Okay? It's okay if you got wrong now, uh, but uh, during the exam, okay, make sure you do it correctly. All right. Okay, so Three resistor, we have R1 here, 2 ohm, R2, 4 ohm, and R3, 6 ohm. Connected in series, okay? They are connected in series with a battery supply 6 voltage, the potential difference, okay? And this is the current flow in the circuit. It flows through the emitter, flows through R1, R2, R3, and flows throughout the circuit, okay? V1 connected in parallel with R1. Uh, V2 connected in parallel with the second resistor and V3 connected in parallel to the third resistor. Okay, fine. Effective resistance of the circuit. Student, again, uh, Zheng Yang, welcome. Okay, we are now discussing question two in page six in your module, the second learning standard to solve a problem involving combinations of series and parallel circuit. Okay, number two, how to find effective resistance. Are you done? Okay, this is in series. So how to find effective resistance in series? Uh, you just sum for all R1 plus R2 plus R3. So the answer will be, yes, 12 ohm. Okay. Second, find the current in the circuit. Student, how to find current in the circuit? What formula to apply here? And remember, for V, I, and R, we only use one single formula here, which is Ohm's law formula. Yes, so I equal to V divided R. Very good, one here. So you can find 
V in me, the total voltage supplied by the battery, and R is the effective resistance, which is 12. So we'll give you 0 0.5 ampere. So 0 0.5 ampere is the current flow throughout this series circuit. Okay, 0 0.5 ampere read here, 0 0.5 ampere flows to R1, 0 0.5 ampere flows to R2, also 0 0.5 ampere flows through R3. Okay, now find potential difference across V1, V2, and V3. Remember, for series, when you plus V1, V2, and V3, it will give you 6 volt, the total voltage supply. How to find V for each? Apa formula nak guna? So, the same formula. Yes, we can apply Ohm's law formula. V1 equal to I R1. V2 equal to I R2. V3 equal to I R3. The current is all the same, 0 0.5. But they have different resistance. So, we multiply for each resistance. So, here, give you 1 volt for V1, 2 volt for V2, and 3 volt for V3. So later when you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 will give you the total potential difference supplied by the battery or the dry cell. Okay, so are you under, can you understand, can you follow question 2, how to find A, B, and C? Are you clear with the solution, students? Okay, very good, Wanjia. Okay, I hope the rest also the same. Okay, now we go to number three. Okay, number three. Okay, my diagram is missing, but you have yours in your module. So you can see from the diagram in your module, we have 8 ohm and 12 ohm resistor are connected in series with the 12, ohm, 12 volt battery. So find the potential difference. Mean we are looking for V. Okay, find the potential difference across each resistor. Okay, how to find potential difference? Okay, so how to find potential difference in this example? First and foremost, you have to find the effective resistance and the current flow in the circuit. How to find the effective resistance? Okay, so 28 plus 12 is 20. How to find the current flow in the circuit, students? So how to find the current flow? I use I equal to VR, V in it total supply by the battery, and R in it is the effective resistor. So the current flow throughout the circuit is 0 0.6 ampere. Mean 0 0.6 ampere of current flow through eight resistors, 0 0.6 ampere of current also flow through the 12 ohm resistor. Okay, so now we can find potential different across each by using Ohm's law. V equal I R. Okay, for A, do you agree? 4.8 volt. Potential different across the 8 ohm resistor. So I 0 0.6 and the resistor is 8. So 4.8. And for B, the voltage or the potential different across the 12 ohm resistor. So we'll give you 7.2 volt. So when you add 4.8 plus 7.2, it will give you the total voltage supplied by the cell, which is 12 volt. Okay, simple, right? For number three. Okay, then can we move to number four? Can you follow me or uh, am I too fast, students? Or just nice? Okay, I am not too fast, right? You can follow me, right? Okay, very good. Okay, now we proceed with number four. We have a few more questions left. Not much not yet. Okay, so uh, now it's 11.05. Okay, so we plan to finish at 11 past 30 or earlier if we can uh, finish it earlier. Okay, then number four. Okay, this is the diagram related. We have three resistors. You can see now R1, R2, and R3. Okay, how they are connected, it is stated in the question. But if not stated from the drawing, you can understand R1 and R2 and R3 are all connected in parallel to the battery. Okay, fine. Potential different across each resistor. Student, this one have to calculate or not? Ah, yes, Ong Jung, very good. 
you don't have to calculate because we understand if all are parallel, all the voltage will be the same as the voltage supplied by the battery. Yes, very good. So all will be 6 volt because all are parallel electrons. So 6 volt here across the 2 ohm resistor, 6 volt also across the 4 ohm resistor, also 6 volt across the 6 ohm resistor. Okay, now find effective resistance of the circuit. How to find effective resistance for parallel circuit. Yes. So our formula is, yes, 1 over R equal 1 over R1 plus. 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Okay, Lisa. So if you are uh, familiar with the equation, so you can uh, simplify it by writing like this. Okay, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6. And then just write in bracket. Okay, this shows the inverted. Okay, so the answer is 1.1 ohm. Did you get 1.1? Yes, very good. Okay, 1.1 ohm. O 1.09. Okay, 1.09 or 1.1 ohm. Okay, now find the current. Okay, once you find the resist, uh, effective resistance, so no problem for you in finding the current either in the main circuit or in each branches. Okay, in C, we find the current in the main circuit. The current shows here in the emitter in the main circuit. Okay, how to find? So, Again, the formula, yes, B over R ohm jump, yes. So B, the total voltage. So this is the effective resistance. So it will give you 5.5, uh, 5.45, okay, 5.45. If you are using 1.09, so you can get 5.45, okay. So 5.5, read here, 5.5. Okay, then later student, this 5.5 will flow. So we understand the current flow from the positive terminal of the battery entering the emitter. So here it will read 5.5 ampere. Okay, it read 5.5. And where this F5 ampere goes, so it goes entering the first branches, entering the second branches and entering the third branches so 5.5 will be divided unequally in these three branches why divided unequally because all has different resistor okay so if the resistance is lower means the current flow in that branches is greater or lower if the resistance is lower more current flow or less current flow if the resistance is lower, how? Can you guess? If the resistance is lower, resistance is lower mean easy for the current to flow uh, because lower resistor, which means more current will flow to R1 and less current will flow to R3 because the resistance is very high, see, it's very difficult for the current to pass through. Uh, so you can imagine like that. So least current will flow to the third branches. Okay, so how to find? Okay, so you can calculate each current by this formula. I1, the current flow towards the first resistor, equal V divided by R1. Any divided by R2, this one divided by R3. Yeah, okay. So remember, the higher the resistance means more difficult for the current to pass through. So lower current will pass through the resistance. If the resistance is lower, then easy for the current to pass through. So they flow with a bigger amount. All right. So for I1, we have 3 amperes. So 3 amperes. If you put an emitter here, so it will read 3 ampere. Okay, let's say I add emitter here, so it will read 3 ampere. Okay. I put emitter here, either I put on front or behind the resistor, so it will be here 1.5 ampere, uh, the second highest. And here, if I place emitter here at R3, it would read the least current, 1 ampere. Why least? Because the resistance is the highest among three. This one, why read the greatest? Because the resistance is the lowest. So when they meet back at the end of the branches, 3 ampere, 1.5 ampere, 1 ampere meet here, then it will become 5.5 again. Okay. Uh, so can you see the journey of this current through this parallel circuit? 5.5 flowing, 
and then 3 ampere enter the first branches, 1.5 enter the second, 3, uh, 1 ampere enter the third, and the mid back at the end of the road become 5.5 again. Okay, so this is the journey of a current through parallel circuit. Right? Okay, so I hope you are clear with the example I gave you. Okay, number five. Can you try, student? Okay, this is our last two questions, I guess, in page seven. Okay, the diagram connected three resistor, six and three is in parallel, and then they are in series with the four ohm resistor. So you have to solve these two first to find the total or the effective resistance in the circuit. So this is our voltage supply by the dry cell. Okay, Goja, 5, 0.5. Oh, very fast. Okay, let us check. Okay, how to find the current. Okay, so to find the current first, as usual, find the effective resistance first. So we have 6 and 3 parallel, and then they are in series with the 4 ohm. So the effective resistance is 6, 6 ohm. Okay, then how to find the emitter reading? Emitter reading means current flow. Remember, emitter reads current flow through the circuit. Yes, very good, Goja. So I, V divided R, the voltage is 3, effective resistance is 6. So 0 0.5 ampere shows here. Uh, 0 0.5 ampere reads here. Okay, then where will this 0 0.5 ampere go? So it will enter the branch and will be divided into the 6 and 3 ohms. Divided equally or not? Divided equally or not, this 0 0.5. And they will divide it unequally because uh, the different resistance. But more current go to where? More current go to 6 or more current go to 3 ohm? Uh, more current go to 6 or more current flows to 3 ohm. Yes, very good. More current will flow to 3 ohm because the resistance is low. more easy to pass. Here, I yeah, very difficult to pass. Very high, the resistance. And then when they meet back here, they combine back become 0 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5 flows here through the 4 ohm resistor and the circuit is complete. So this is the cycle. Okay, so we want to find potential difference across the parallel network. Okay, so what is the potential difference across this network? How to find? Okay, potential difference. Okay, so first, this is the effective resistance for this parallel network, which is 2. Okay, how to find 2? 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. So invert will give you 2 ohm if you calculate uh, from here. Okay, 2 ohm here. Then how to find the potential difference here? Again, Ohm's law formula. 0 0.5 current flow through this junction multiplied by the voltage in this junction. So 1 volt. Okay, so in this junction, the potential difference is 1 volt. So this means, student, what is the potential difference across the 4 ohm resistor? If here is 1 volt, and our total is 3. Yes, very good. So for this one, it is 2 volt. Later, 1 plus 2 will give you 3 volt. Yes, very good. Okay, last question. C. What is the current flow through the 6 ohm resistor? Okay, how to find? As in question 4, you can use this formula. The current flow throughout the 6 ohm resistor is the voltage, uh, the voltage in this junction uh, divide with the resistor. Six. So it will give you 0 0.17. Okay, so from 0 0.5, 0 0.16 flow through the 6 ohm resistor, which means how much flow through the 3 ohm resistor? How to find? Uh, how much flow through the 3 ohm resistor? So uh, you can minus. Okay, you can minus. So I flow through the 3 ohm resistor, let me write like this, is 0 0.5, the total current, the main current. Minus with the current flow on the 6 ohm resistor. So it will give you roughly 0 0.33 0 .3 ampere. Okay, you can find by doing like this or you can apply the formula as shown. So I equal to V divided by R where the voltage here is 1. 
divided by the resistor here, which is 3. So 1 over 3 will give you 0 0.33 ampere. So you can see the answer is the same. So once you find the current flow in 6, you can find the current flow in the second resistor by just subtract the main current to the current flow on top or you can find by this formula I equal to B divided R. Yes, Ongjian, very good. Okay. Okay, student, now one last question for today. Okay, are you still doing good there? <laughs> Anybody feel tired already? Uh, this is our last question for today. We have 6A, 6B, and 6C. Okay, we do them together. Okay, everyone, find the reading of the ammeter shows in each circuit. Okay, first and foremost, you must look carefully where is the ammeter placed at. Uh, dia letak ammeter di mana? Okay, A, it is placed in the main circuit. Okay, and in B, it is placed in this branch connected to the 2 ohm resistor and for C again it is connected to this branch connected to the 6 ohm resistor. So in each I have give you a clue. Uh, this is the uh, resistance in this parallel network. Uh, for you know how to find 4 right? Uh, they are the same 8 8 so 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 will give you 2 over 8 so 2 over 8 inverted is 8 over 2 give you 4 okay the tips here if they give you identical very easy to find 8 8 you just divide it by 2 so it should be 4 if they give you here 6 6 ohm 6 ohm so what will be the effective resistance here it will be it will be uh, it will be 3. If they give you here 10 ohm, here also 10 ohm, which means the effective resistance here is 5. Okay, yes. If they give you 12, here is 12 ohm. This one also 12 ohm, so we understand uh, here is 6. Uh, it will be easy if they give you identical. Uh, but normally in the question, uh, they they prefer to give you not identical one. So you have to do some calculations. Okay, so how to find reading of emitter here? I give you the example for A and then you can try for B and C. Okay, for A, this is the effective resistance in the circuit. Okay, these two are parallel. So we find first it is 4 and then plus with 8 ohm in series. So it will give you 12, the effective resistance in this combination circuit. So then how to find the current flow? Use this formula. I equal VR. Where is B? This one, 20, shown by the voltage supply by the battery. So divided by the resistance, effective resistance 12, will give you 1.67. So this emitter here read 1.67. Okay, students. So we understand here it read 1.67 ampere. So later when the switch is closed, okay, 1.67 will flow through here from this direction. 1.67 entering 8 ohm and then later this 1.67 will be divided equally into these two branches. So why divided equally? Because they are identical. Okay, so here you tahu lah berapa masuk. You just divided two. Okay, 50% goes to the upper branch, 50% current go to the uh, lower branch and finally they meet back here at the end of the road, become back 1.67 ampere. So uh, the process is repeated until you uh, open the switch. Okay, then B, how to find? Uh, how to find the reading of this emitter? Okay, you try to find. Okay, what is 5, what is 6 on Zheng? And all oh, you respond to my question that's not for identical resistor, yes. Okay, for B, are you done with B? Okay, I'll give you one minute for B. Okay, before I show to you the solution. For B. Okay, the voltage supplied by the battery is 4.5 volt. We have eight resistor here and we have two and two in parallel. So you can find the total in this network, one ohm. Okay, 1.2 plus 1.2 is two over two, uh, two last so one. Okay, so the effective resistance will be, uh, will be nine, right? Uh, so find the current here. So this is not the main current, but this is the current flow in these two ohm 
and sister. Okay, are you done for B, students? Are you done for B? What is the amount of current flow through the two ohm resistor on the top branch of this parallel network? I didn't see my answer. 0 0.5, Junwei said 0 0.5. Okay, how about the rest? What do you say for B? Okay, we check. Confirm. Okay, we check. So first, this is the effective resistor. You know how to find, right? Okay, A plus 1 here. Then, find the main current flow first. Uh, find the main current flow first. How to find the main current, the voltage 4.5 from the battery divided by the effective resistor. So 0 0.5 in it is the main current. Main current flows where? Main current flows if I add an emitter here. So 0 0.5 current flows here, Junwei. Okay. So later, student, this 0 0.5 will flow through the 8 ohm resistor and this 0 0.5 will be divided into this junction. Divided equally or unequally? Divided equally or unequally? Now they are identical, right? So divided equally, yes, which means from 0 0.5, half will go to the top branches, another half go to the lower branches, which means here berapa? Kalau you bagi dua, means sini 0 0.5, nah 0 0.25. Above also 0 0.25. So this emitter will be 0 0.25. Okay, if you do by calculation, ah, macam ini. So we label here as I1, 0.2, uh, 0 0.5 divided by 2. Okay, so 0 0.25. So this is the, the, the node I placed. Main current divided equally among the two branches as it has equal resistance of 2. Okay, kalau sini 1 ohm, sini 2 ohm, are you going to kira use I equal to V divided R? But now since they are same, so we just divided. Uh, 0 0.5, the main current with 2. If you have three branches, uh, three branches, I add another branches at the middle here. Uh, kalau cikgu tambah lagi satu 2 ohm resistor here. Uh, so you should divide it by, uh, so 0 0.5 now should be divided by, should be divided by 3. Uh, so kalau ada 4 branches, all the same, should be divided by 4. Uh, that is how uh, the current flow through the branches. So the meet back here become back 0 0.5 again continuously. Okay, uh, Junwei, did you get it now? So it is not 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the current flow in the main current. So you have to divide it by 2. All right. So the answer here is 0 0.25 ampere students. Okay, try C, the last question for today. C, uh, similar case with B, the position of the emitter is the same at the top branch of the six uh, resistor, six ohm. But the case now here, they are not identical. Uh, so you have to find through calculation. Okay, so we have eight at front and 2.5 ohm uh, behind. Okay, so you find first, uh, as usual, find the effective resistance first. So here will give you 1.5 if you calculated 1.6 plus 1.2. So you find the inverted will give you 1.5, right? Okay, this one, the effective resistance is, okay, tell me what is the effective resistance in circuit C? Tell me first, what is the effective resistance? So 8 plus this one, the parallel network and plus another one here in series 2.5. So this will give you, yes, very good. It will give you 12 ohm, right? Uh, so the effective resistance for this circuit is 12 ohm. Okay, now, second, find what? After you find the effective resistance, first you have to find, yes, the main current flow in the circuit. So what is the main current flow? Use this equation. The total voltage supplied by the battery, 24, uh, divided by the effective resistance, which is 12. So the main current is 2 ohm. 2 ohm not flowing here, okay? 2 ohm is the main current. Uh, for example, if I place emitter here, I place emitter here, it read 2 ohm. Or I place emitter here in front of the 8 ohm resistor, so it will read 2 ohm. Or I place another emitter here before the branches, it will reach 2 ohm. I place emitter here, it will reach 2 ohm. 
O emitter here, it will read 2 ohm. Another emitter here, it will read 2 ohm. Okay, but now the emitter is placed here at the top branches. So what do we understand? This 2 ohm flows through the 8 resistor and once it reaches these branches, it will be divided into the 6 ohm and 2 ohm unequally. So from 2 ohm, more current flow to 6 or more current flow to 2 ohm resistor? Uh, which one? More current flow to 6 or more current flow to 2 ohm? Definitely, more current will go to the 2 ohm resistor because the resistor is smaller, so easy to pass through and least current flow to the 6 ohm resistor. Okay, so how to find them? Uh, you can find by using this equation. Okay. Uh, this is the potential difference at the junction voltage, which is 3 volts. So, how to find the current flow here? Okay. So, V divide R. Okay, the junction voltage for this uh, parallel network is 3 volt. You find the voltage first uh, here in this uh, parallel network. And then the current will be 0 0.5 ampere. So from 2 ampere, what happened? 0 0.5 will flow through the 6 ohm resistor, which means 1.5 ampere flows through the 2 ohm resistor. So finally, at the end of the branches, they will meet back. 0 0.5 here, 1.5 here, so become 2.0. Okay, so again, repeat until you open the switch okay so are you okay with all the question question 6 a b and c can you follow students can you follow a b and c okay yeah? any question any one last question before we end our lesson today so i hope you can spend more time in doing more exercises on how to solve a question involving combination series okay so then you can master how to find b how to find i how to find r in each given question so i hope you're okay with this uh, lesson so if you have uh, if you need to understand more, you can later you can watch back the replays from this video. Okay, so I off the recording first. Uh, do you have any further question again, students? So if you have no more question, okay, thank you very much for your effort. Thank you very much for your time. Teacher really appreciate it. Okay. Happy holiday anyway. Okay, so see you back in school tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. So we will continue with 3.3 onwards. Okay, so again, thank you very much and bye-bye for now. See you later in school. Bye-bye, everyone.